Well, thank you everybody for uh, joining tonight. And um, yeah, uh, and thank you to our guests who we'll be talking to momentarily. So we've got Sean Conroy from uh, C12. We've got uh, Prastu Hidari from C14 and we've got Santiago Sotomayor from C14. So thank you all three for um, coming tonight. So we're basically gonna talk about the mentorship program. I'm gonna talk about what to expect. Um, all of you are going to be starting your internship um, term soon. So this is kind of the perfect time to start matching you all up with mentors to kind of help uh, get you some guidance and some support as you kind of start this like, new journey um, into, into uh, finding a career. So alumni can be very helpful in, help in, in, in working towards that. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the mentorship program um, and then we're gonna uh, meet the panel. And um, I've got some questions, but I would encourage you all to think of some questions to ask them. Um, we've got, so Sean was the mentor to both Santiago and Prastu. So yeah, definitely have some questions ready. And um, you know, I think it's gonna be a really good engaging dialogue. Dialogue. All right, yeah, thanks for that. And uh, you can see the agenda on screen, but I think uh, if you want to advance, um, we can, again, so part of our practice, and, and again, we want to continue this, regardless of where we're at, is acknowledging our position, both physically and digitally, um, to acknowledge our, our location on the Coast Salish people's lands. Um, but beyond that, I mean, we're looking at meaningful ways we can continue to collaborate. So we're building relationships with the Indigenous Matriarchs or Media Lab at Emily Carr. Uh, we had a great article by an alumni member, John Pantherbone, who's not only just an amazing alumni, alumni in general, he's giving back and helping to create pathways for future Indigenous and others just to come into the program. He's an amazing guy. And Quinn, Quinn was a mentor um, for our Indigenous Matriarchs or Media Group. But anyway, this is to say that, you know, we do acknowledge the, the land, but also we want to continue to have meaningful collaborations as we move forward. So I think, you know, in, in that we're learning ourselves in, in ways to do this and we're going to continue this practice and we're appreciative of being aware of everything and this is the time to do it. Anyway, um, Kristen, Thank if you, you want to go from here. Thank you, Dennis, for that. That's great. So uh, just to talk about the mission behind the program. Uh, so the MDM mentoring program, uh, it does offer support. The main purpose of this is to offer support and guidance to MDM students. So that's all of you um, and alumni as well as they develop their careers. So basically the mentorship program pairs motivated MDM students and graduates with MDM alumni. So it's a program to, that matches people to share experiences, um, advice, um, and guidance to, to anyone who's embarking on a career or who just wants, who's looking for a fresh change and just needs some peer guidance. So why do we need a mentorship program? So we are at 14 cohorts, um, and this includes your cohort, um, cohort 15. So we have an MDM family of over 600 people. And so that's a lot of, a lot of people that have gone through the program, a lot of people with a lot of experience, which leads to the next point. So we've got alumni with a lot of experience and they've got a lot of experience to share. And, you know, that's why we wanted to formalize this, um, this program to, to, to share with all of you. So we've been informally connecting alumni and students since the beginning, I think, Dennis. <laughs> and so um, we wanted to formalize it um, while, you know, students have been making connections organically through and through uh, faculty and staff over the years. We wanted to have a program to help connect you with, um, with other alumni um, to make it easier for you and to also just um, enrich the alumni engagement as well. So to that, the connection of the alumni uh, to students should be more than finding a job. And this is really important. Um, so, you know, while there is a big emphasis on, you know, career guidance, career support, it's intended to strengthen the connection uh, between um, the alumni community and um, current students. So there is a lot more that goes, uh, goes into mentoring. And so I thought it was important to include the definitions. Um, so these are a couple of definitions about mentoring, but the big picture of it is really to teach or give advi advice or guidance to. So mentors are, 
you know, they're there to kind of guide you throughout your journey, but you're really there to, you know, do the work, but they're there to really support you in the experience um, that they have. So some of the benefits and rewards of the mentorship program. So that's developing or changing your career path. So I know a lot of you probably came into this, this program with uh, an idea of what you wanted to do. And some of you may be in the situation now as you're entering your internship uh, term where you're like, oh, I don't know about that anymore. So this is why it's, I think, a great idea to have a mentor, especially right now. Um, expanding professional uh, networks. Our alumni have, you know, they're, they, they definitely have had a lot of experience networking themselves and they, a lot of them have built a strong network. Developing new skills and knowledge, uh, learning from experienced alumni, uh, contextualizing the value of your MDM degree. And then the last one is becoming a mentor yourself. So, um, you know, you're all going to be invited to uh, to, to apply to, to be a mentee, to have a mentor. But after you graduate and once you're part of the alumni community, we really do encourage you to become a mentor yourself if that's something that you're interested in. Just a way to give back. So some additional info about the mentorship program. So the start date will be, uh, we'll start matching you up with uh, mentors um, in August, so pretty soon, I'll be sending out uh, some questionnaires. And then the goal is having all of you matched up by September 1st. Um, and then the time commitment. So we do ask that mentors and mentees commit to six months. And this is really for, I mean, this is for both mentors and mentees, but this is for as a mentee, you get the most out of the mentorship. And as well, like if it isn't a good fit for you, it gives us time to find somebody who is just a better fit. And we also do encourage anybody who has, um, who has a really strong connection, uh, who wants to keep the mentorship going after the six months to keep it going. Obviously like, you know, it will be outside of the mentorship program, but we definitely encourage that, that uh, connection to keep going. So- I'm gonna uh, give you a breather here too, just before you get into that last bit. So for everyone on the call, I mean, it, this is a value add, right? So it's not mandated, you're not looking at, you're not enforced on having a, a, a mentor. But we highly encourage you to take advantage of it. And to Kristen's point, I mean, this is a it's it's mutually beneficial for both mentors and mentees because it's rewarding to give back in that way. And again, mentors can be anyone. They can be younger than you. They can be from a different discipline. And it's and it is more than just getting that job. It is getting settled into the post, you know, post MDM life and, and you know, finding your people and community and keeping your professional development up and thinking about career advancement, but also just thinking about you know, staying in, in, cut, in touch with home. Like how do you deal with homesickness and all those things? But anyway, the, it's, it's, it, it's, a, it's a great value added addition to our program. And I'm super appreciative, appreciative of Kristen for actually putting this together. Um, and, uh, but anyway, I encourage you to take advantage, but you're not mandated. So, you know, you take advantage, but if you don't, others <laughs> will. So anyway, back no. to you. You, added, you had your sip of water. I wanted to give you a breather there. Thank so. you. I needed that sip of water. You knew, yeah. you know. <laughs> Um, no, and, and to thank you. I was, uh, thanks for bringing that up, Dennis. Yeah, that it isn't, it is optional. This isn't, uh, it isn't a credit. It's not a course. It's not um, for you, you. It doesn't go towards your degree. So it is completely optional. So when I do send an email out asking if you want a mentor, um, obviously, if you don't want one, that's fine. But we encourage you to, to, to get one, to, um, to seek one, because I think regardless, like Dennis said, regardless of age, regardless regardless of your experience, because I know some of you do have a lot of experience. I just think regardless of where you are in your life, I think having a mentor, um, you know, whether that's career or not, it's, it's, I think a really important beneficial thing to have. So yeah, it is optional, but just highly encouraged. <laughs> um, so a bit about the matching process. So as I mentioned earlier, we will be, um, I'll be basically sending a questionnaire out to uh, to you all, and then as well, a questionnaire out to the mentors. And based on those questionnaires, uh, so those questionnaires will ask about your skills, career background, desired job. And based on that, that information, I take that and I match you up with, um, with an alumni. 
And then when the, once the matches have been made, I make an email introduction between you and your, your mentor. And then um, I added this question in there. Um, one of the things you wanna think about before, during, um, before and during your mentorship begins is what do you wanna get out of the meetups? Right. Um, one of the important things to remember too is that this is your response. Your response. It is your responsibility to um, to basically get in touch, uh, uh, set up the meetings, and really kind of um, take ownership of the mentorship. Um, the mentor will be there, kind of checking in. But you know, this really is. You know, it's you're kind of in the driver's seat. But um, but yeah, we. I, I really want to encourage you all to kind of take ownership because. I do do check-ins like during the six months, I do um, a check-in once a month with the mentors and mentees just to make sure that everything's going okay. And if it's not going okay, you know, um, what can we do to fix it? But other than, I mean, I, it is a pretty hands-off approach. I won't be setting up the meetings. I won't be, you know, sending you a, uh, an agenda for your meetups. You know, that really is uh, for you to figure out what, what goals do you have? What questions do you have? Um, what things are you looking to um, get out of your meetups, as I mentioned? So that's a little bit about the program. And then this is our panel. This is, uh, these are our awesome guests. So we've got Sean Conroy and we've got Prestu with the awesome mask. <laughs> we've got Santiago, so Tamara. So the cool thing about this trio is that Sean was actually the mentor to both Prestu and Santiago. So that's, uh, that's a pretty cool little tidbit. Um, and then at this point, um, I kind of wanted to uh, ask, uh, maybe I should stop sharing the screen. Yeah, I'll do that. Uh, or I can keep it up, but I was going to ask okay. Sean, uh, I was going to ask Sean first, if you could just like introduce yourself and just talk a little bit, give, give everybody a little bit of background on yourself. Yeah, sure. Happy to. Uh, so hi everyone, uh, my name is Sean as, uh, Kristen, uh, wonderfully spelt right on the slide. I appreciate it. Uh, not everyone does that. Um, yeah, I was a C12. So I graduated in, oh God, was it 2017? I want to say it feels like a 2018. Feels like forever ago with this <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> um, yeah, no. So uh, a little bit about me. I came to Canada uh, to do the CDM program um, right after undergrad. I did my undergrad in Ireland, uh, which was in a creative digital media program. I uh, didn't know what I wanted to do, uh, and college was finishing, so I freaked out and was like, "I'm going to do a master's." And looked at a whole bunch of things and kind of settled on uh, the CDM as like the best course of action for me. And uh, well, given that I'm still in Canada, I think that was probably the right call. Um, and that I have a job, I guess that's also important. <laughs> um, yeah, so I came uh, in with the, uh, the 12th cohort. Um, my original intent was to uh, be a motion designer. That's what I was experienced in, um, or like videography, something like that. Did a whole bunch of different things on the program. There was actually little to none of what I originally planned to do in the program. I learned a whole lot of new things instead. And when I came out, I did first start pursuing motion design, that sort of work, and ended up settling in uh, the games industry, which was a big surprise to me. Um, wasn't expecting to. Uh, at the time, they were called Cooper's New Reality Garage. Uh, they then got purchased uh, and were now known as Truly Social Games, uh, the Vancouver hub of it. We have ones in Portland and uh, in Belarus as well. But uh, yeah, no, I was hired as a community artist there, um, which is, you know, there was some motion graphic stuff in there involved in the whole process. Uh, but eventually, I've since then shifted over to uh, just doing game art full time. I haven't actually touched any of our community stuff in like well over a year. Uh, but yeah, I've been there for three years and uh, got the offer from Kristen last year just to say, hey, like we're trying this mentorship program. I think it was the first time, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so yeah, I was like, yeah, I want to try it out because uh, I think the worst part about the internship term, um, unsurprisingly, is that you like, you know, you go through the, the steps of looking for a job, which isn't fun. Um, you know, having connections, having people to talk to who can help make that process a little less rough. Uh, for me, certainly, it was a whole lot of use uh, when I was looking. So, uh, yeah, so I kind of saw it as an opportunity, as uh, Kristen said, or, you know, as you kind of give back, uh, you know, kind of do your part. Um, and yeah, no, got to meet some great people. Got to meet Paris Du and Santiago, who 
uh, Santiago gave me a, a very special drink from Colombia, which uh, I was very appreciative of. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Santiago actually works with me at the moment, um, which was a funny coincidence. Uh, but I'll let her explain her side of the story when she's introducing herself. Uh, yeah, I think I hit everything, I hope. Uh, oh, yeah, I also teach part-time at Vancouver Film School, which was something CDM kind of set in motion with the teaching class. It kind of irked me to, not irked me, urged me, that's the word, <laughs> urged me to kind of, you know, take the opportunity to start. I'd always been interested in teaching and then got to do a module there at CDM and now I actually teach as well. So it was pretty, it was pretty sweet for me. <laughs> that's great. Thank you, Sean. And one thing to mention too, uh, I don't have the link in front of me, but uh, Sean wrote a great post that was uh, recently featured on the website. Sean, I may have forgotten. I don't know if you saw that, but I forgot. That's okay. <laughs> I forgot your way, but no, it was a really great post, um, but no, that's great. Um, Prostu, did you want to talk a little bit about your, your background? Of course. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So, hi. Uh, I'm Paris Tu, I'm C14's alumni. And uh, I'm so happy that today I'm here and I'm participating in this program because um, I found my first job through this program and I believe that it's very helpful. Um, before introducing uh, or talking about my background, I just wanted to say I just uh, watched uh, C15's showcase and it was impressive. And I really uh, like surprised that you uh, made it. You go, you went through the whole program online and it wasn't easy. You had to get along with so many people with different backgrounds, different cultures and you had to be a good teammate, so you had to attend to different uh, daily check-ins, updated your progress, um, and it's tough, it's not easy. But guess what? This is all you have to do in a real life, in a real job. So you already have so many experience, so great, ex so many great experience to how to work online or even in person, which I feel like it's easier, much easier, uh, but you can do it. I mean, you made it and uh, you can find your job and uh, everything's going to be fine. Don't get stressed out about uh, the whole job hunting. Uh, so a little bit about my background. I started, uh, like, I started painting analog when I was just 11 years old. And then I got my uh, bachelor degree in computer science. So um, I was, I used to do programming. And then uh, I kind of I got interested in designing website templates so at some point I just quit programming and I uh, became full-time gra graphic designer and digital painter I've done some animation and game projects in my country Iran and then after I uh, got my first master degree in graphic design. I came to Canada for my second master degree. I know so many like very unnecessary degrees, but um, yeah. And then after CDM, um, uh, with help of, with help of Sean um, and Dave, of course, I got my first job at TSG as a character, as a concept artist, first as a character designer, and then um, mostly as a concept artist and UI UX designer. Yeah, that's just me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Prestu. Um, Santiago, did you want to talk a little bit about your background? Yeah, for sure. Uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me, Kristen, and uh, well, Dave and every one of the staff as well. Um, a little bit of my background, I think I, uh, I met you guys already, like a few weeks back, like a few months back, I think I was in the speaker session as well, but uh, so I did my undergrad, undergraduate in visual arts, I was working a lot in terms of uh, magazines and stuff, I was very interested in graphic design back in the undergraduate, uh, but at some point I switched uh, into video games, so I started doing like a small course uh in game design back in 2015 uh, and then i decided to create a studio uh with my friends back in colombia so we created a video game mobile studio called madbricks in colombia uh for and i spent uh what seven years working with them 
back in Colombia in different kind of games, especially hyper casual games. Uh, and then I decided that I was, I was, um, I, I needed like a next chapter in my life. So I came to Canada, to Vancouver, to the uh, CDM. And uh, it was super fun. I met a lot of people. And at the end of the, of the, of the program, uh, uh, in the mentorship program, uh, well, I met Sean. I think I met him before, but like properly spoke with him um, in the mentorship program. And he helped me a lot uh, through the process, uh, especially just like, just to talk, to have someone to talk about, to talk about the industry, talk about what's going on here in Vancouver. Uh, he he introduced me, he presented me to a lot of people uh, that were working at different companies, um, truly social games, EA and uh, Eastside Games and other companies, which was great. Uh, and as Kristen said, it's not only like to look for a job, but it's also like to talk to people who's got similar interests um, as you, which, uh, which he was, he was great. And I'm super grateful. Um, and, uh, yeah, so five, I think four months ago, I started working at EA as a game designer for FIFA. Uh, and it has been uh, super fun. I've learned a lot. Um, and yeah, and, uh, and yeah, and the drink that I gave, uh, Sean Saguardiente is a Colombian drink, very tasty, highly recommended it. <laughs> and yeah, happy to help. It was, a, it was a very good drink. <laughs> yeah, I'm just it needs one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank all three of you. And um, to mention too, uh, Prostu and Santiago have agreed to become mentors. So this kind of goes back to the point about the mentees, the, the, the mentees, the student becomes the teacher. So <laughs> the mentees become the mentors. So thank you both. Um, that's amazing. So uh, this part of um, this part of the talk, well, I'm going to get things rolling with some questions for the three of you, and then we really do encourage um, all of you to jump in and ask questions. Either turn on your audio and video, or um, you can pop it in the chat, and I'll try to keep an eye on the chat. Uh, so I think. I think three of you may have answered this already, but um, I'll, I'll ask this to Sean and then Prostu and Santiago, but what was the main, oh, sorry, I'll ask Sean this first. Um, what was your main reason for wanting to be a mentor? Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think I touched on it a little bit earlier, but it was just trying to, uh, I guess, in a way, give back to uh, the program in a way. Um, you know, the job hunt isn't the funnest thing in the world to do in any sort of uh, assistance you can give somebody to make it a little less, um, you know, uh, arduous, uh, I think helps a lot. Also the like massive check that you sent four months afterwards was, uh, pretty welcome too, <laughs> which if, <laughs> I'm not supposed to talk about, <laughs> but yeah, no, I think it was mainly just about giving back and, uh, you know, kind of helping people like I'd been in Santiago and Paris shoes before. And it's just kind of like, um, you know, what does it from, the perspective of being able to help uh, maybe a bit more uh, efficiently or something like that. Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, I think one of you or all three of you brought it up that the three of you have something in common, obviously other things in common, but that, you know, you came to Vancouver uh, from outside of the country. So, you know, um, you, I think Santiago, you spoke to the point of uh, the fact that, you know, it goes beyond just getting career guidance that, you know, you're getting, um, you're, you have somebody who understands kind of, you know, who's been in your shoes. So, you know, just kind of wanted to bring that point up. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, like, like for me, uh, it's, uh, it's again, mo more than helping you guys uh, finding a job, which of course is important, but it's more like, uh, I know it's important to having someone to chat, uh, right? Because uh, not everyone is interested in the same things. Like most of you, I don't know, someone is interested in being an engineer, uh, some of you UX designers, some of you game designers, some of you different things. So it's, it's not easy to find someone that is working in a place where you will love to work or that you feel like uh, you'll be comfortable working at. Um, so it's more about chatting uh, and getting to know. And like, like I was in your position not long ago, like uh, not long ago. I don't like, uh, and right now working at, at, at EA, it gives me like a peace of mind, like a, you know, like a breathing moment, like, okay, I went through all this, it's going to be okay. But at the same time, I'm very, I'm gr very grateful because uh, there was some, someone helping me out and not just, not just one, like every one of the staff from the CDM. And for me, Sean was just like, I think 
we just went for coffees, we just chat, and I was like, hey, you know someone that is doing this? And he was, yeah, for sure, like, talk to this guy. And, and you know, just, <laughs> that was, that was. <laughs> just a bit, yeah. <laughs> and, and it was fun, it was fun, because we just um, get to know each other and chatting, and, uh, you know, uh, so yeah, it's the same, giving back. I think uh, Shine did a great job, and uh, I want to I wanna, I wanna try and move up to, to that as well. <laughs> That's great. And to your point, you brought up on that you got, you know, that you got together with Sean for coffee. And one of the things I was thinking about was, you know, with the uh, challenges of this lovely pandemic, you know, was that, did you find it difficult? And this is actually a question for all three of you. Um, I'd love to hear all of your, um, all of your, your perspectives on this. Like how, you know, was it, did you find it pretty easy to get together or what were some challenges it's kind of what your feelings around that were. Uh, I think I think we did okay. I mean, we definitely did a mix of uh, in person and uh, video stuff. I think honestly, at least with you, Santiago, I remember it was mainly in person, just meeting at Kafka, um, which was super useful because it's right <laughs> next to where I worked. Um, but yeah, I think it, like but we had video call. Yeah, remember? I think the first call I had with both of you was possibly a video call. I think I know it was for you, Paris too. Because you called me from the CDM lobby, if I recall. <laughs> I think so. Um, yeah, no, I yeah, think. Yeah, I, like I didn't uh, give Sean any coffee or anything. So like, <laughs> don't worry, you didn't need to. <laughs> That's what the coffee card was for for us to. That's. What was for. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, no. Uh, like even if all we done were video calls, I think the results would have been the same. Um, you know, all the stuff we talked about, the location didn't matter. Uh, all that mattered was just that we were able to uh, connect in some way and chat about things. So, yeah. And I think like, I mean, of course, uh, our restrictions are still up with COVID and everything, but I think right now it's getting a bit easier uh, to meet and uh, have a, like coffee or whatever, right? I think, uh, of course we can do video calls and everything, but I think it's getting easier. Uh, at first it was challenging because, I mean, we went for a coffee with our masks on, and everything so it was kind of weird but uh you know <laughs> uh still so so to ask to answer your uh previous question i have to say i was in the same situation as uh, c15s are now so i feel like when you are looking for a job it's not just everything's fine i just need a job you have to deal with so many things at the same time like financial stuff you are international student and uh, <clears throat> most of you are alone here by yourself and i really understand your situation so i kind of feel like that's the reason that i love to be not like as a mentor most more as a friend to help you uh, be confident about yourself because it's normal that you feel like oh, okay I don't have in a portfolio I, I you might doubt yourself but I just want to help you to deal with all those emotions and uh, unnecessary or negative thoughts and be more focused on the progress of job seeking that would be my answer I want to jump in just because I think you, you, you that is mentoring. You just nailed what mentoring is, though, because I think everyone has this expectation that a mentor needs to be this wise, wise man on a mountain somewhere. No, I mean, mentoring is on an, dealing with the important issues and helping coach through challenging times. And, and your offer, that is such a mentor. I mean, I don't know anyone who doesn't need that. So don't downplay it. Your offer, you're a mentor. That is, I mean, anyway, full Thanks. on mentor support here. Shout out to you because I don't, I don't like anyone downplaying it that's mentoring anyway i'm done <laughs> no that's great for us too i think you're going to be a great mentor for sure um in terms of your meetups like did you did you have structure this is kind of a more of a question perhaps a question for sean but more of a question for prosty and santiago did you come into your meetings with uh an agenda a structure did you have questions or did you kind of just wing it like you know, maybe talk a little bit about how, uh, you know, the meetings went and what you kind of, how you kind of plan them out. Mm, I can, so for me, it was kind of everything. Uh, what I did with Sean uh, at some point was I had a list of different companies that I liked in Vancouver uh, for a mobile and console uh, game design. 
and not only game design but uh, production as well so I was like sharing that list with uh, Sean the whole time like saying okay uh, do you know someone that is working from here maybe you can help me out like uh, just to connect with them through LinkedIn or just a Zoom call or whatever and see um, if they not only have an opening but also if they can just uh, like you give me some guidance of, of what are the best steps um, to take from this point. Uh, so there was not a, a, there was not always like a schedule, but uh, I, I was always trying to ask a question because I know like time is very valuable, especially uh, now that everyone's uh, like very busy and everyone's working. Like I, I, I wouldn't want to just go to Shannon's like, hey, what's up? No, because that's not the point, right? It's like, okay, um, Okay, yeah, what's up? But can't, like, like, let's talk a little bit of, of something else. Uh, what do you think about this company? What do you think about this guy? What do you think I should do in this situation or not? So yeah, it was kind of everything at once. But uh, I, I, I recommend like uh, entering a meeting or like the mentoring program with a little bit of, uh, of what you want, at least some companies that you're interested in, some positions that you're interested in, so we can help you, uh, help you, help, help. <laughs> something like that goes, yeah. <laughs> yeah same here we started with a question Sean asked me that what kind of job I like and based on that we started updating my portfolio resume and CV uh, I guess for a couple of meetings and then uh, at the same, same time I was preparing a list of companies uh, that I really liked to, I, I would love to work uh, with them and then I went through the LinkedIn, I tried to find mutual friends uh, so that I can ask people to introduce me to some people that are working there. But that was kind of agenda based and also some improv conversations between us. Yeah, yeah. That, I think that sums it up pretty well. <laughs> No, that's great. And it's it's good to hear, you know, that uh, it, each meeting is, you know, different, depend, it doesn't have to follow a specific structure. So appreciate you both kind of talking about what your experiences were with that. Um, were there, I mean, obviously with, you know, the pandemic, uh, you know, but other than that, were there any challenges uh, and, you know, with, with meeting up or just in general or just in per, personally you can talk to um mentorship matchup or just personally were there any challenges or and and if so could you tell us a little bit about that um i think it was actually pretty pretty plain sailing um for the three of us as far as i can remember uh i think at worst we may have had to like reschedule a meeting due to something coming up at work but like aside from that nothing's coming to mind really I, don't know. I think a challenge that was like maybe sometimes like we were in the same spot like uh, there was not much updates or for example mm -hmm. on like my side so you know like uh, I wanted to uh, to have a meeting with Sean but there was nothing crazy going on or much different so I was like hey can we reschedule like I don't have anything new <laughs> you know like right now it's basically the same going on so uh, that that can happen as well but um, apart from that I think like as you said from the beginning uh, it's about the work that you put into your uh, own job searching and job hunting, right? Because if you're not working hard to find a job or to do connections, like, I mean, it doesn't matter if you have a mentor by your side because you're not doing your part of the job, right? Totally. And also, I feel like um, I... Uh, it's not a challenge, but you have to send a message to the mentor. You have to keep asking because those people usually they are like full-time employed and they have to like, sometimes it's hard to deal with, uh, uh, they are dealing with different meetings and this kind of stuff. So I uh, poked Sean um, every <laughs> two days. I was like, Sean, where are you, where are you? And, uh, it was challenging for me and also for Sean, but uh, I, I mean, you have to just not give up. You have to just ask all your questions and uh, uh, yeah, keep trying to find a time to uh, have those conversations. But it's not like challenging, very hard things to do. 
Yeah. No, and that's a good point. Um, one of the things I was thinking about too, you spoke about how, you know, some weeks, uh, you know, you had uh, more to chat about, or you wanted to meet Sean about, but then other weeks, you maybe didn't have as much. So, you know, in terms of, you know, frequency, did you find that you needed, you know, maybe more meetups at the beginning, uh, or less at the end or vice versa? At the beginning, for me, because uh, I had to like, uh, deal with many things like updating portfolios maybe and just finding people everything so uh, once I started uh, working on my stuff everything um, was like happened very good like in the great time but yeah at the first I had to spend more time and asking I had so many questions from Sean yeah I think it was similar. I think uh, the intensity of our meetings was kind of constant. Like uh, we try and do it like once a week or once two weeks. But it was like, you know, because not every time we were talking about like the job hunting, but also chatting about what's going on, uh, what you've been up to. And so, yeah, it's like pretty much the same intensity throughout the, the whole mentorship program. Mm. Yeah, that's that's definitely one thing you did a lot, Santiago. Is you'd ask how things were going on my end, which was always nice. <laughs> um, yeah, it, so that was good because that's kind of like kind of expanding further upon what you. Uh, I think you were saying at Paris too of like, it's not just like oh, it's like a mentor, or like it's a regiment, like it has to be that. Like no, it's like you know, it's just somebody you can chat to, like somebody you can be be friends with. You know, it's more than just um, like I guess old man on a cliff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because like, like, uh, not also we need to chat with someone, but uh, I know that, I mean, I always offer my help with Dushan as well, like, like, he's not, he's in a position to help more than I was at that point, but uh, I was always asking him, like, if you need something from me, just let me know, maybe I can help at some, some point, some way, right, so yeah. that's always nice. Absolutely. Well, that's an important point, and, you know, um, we make suggestions at the beginning uh, to mentors and mentee matches about, you know, uh, you know, meeting up and stuff like that. But like you mentioned, you know, it really is up to you, especially as mentees on how you, um, you know, what the frequency is and how you want your meetups to go and how you want this mentorship relationship to look like. So, um, so I want to see if anybody has any questions. Um, does anybody have any questions They're in the chat or Yeah, I have a question. First of all, thanks for coming out tonight. This is great. I'm actually looking forward to working with the, the mentorship group. I think it's a really good idea. And I think it's a great way to meet some of the former cohorts, which uh, definitely in our cohort, we haven't had much of a chance to do. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm just kind of curious with what did you find was uh, your kind of your, your best result for looking for a job? What, like what, what really worked well? And, uh, and what did you find didn't work well? that's kind of open to anyone um i guess i can then not necessarily for uh, for when i was looking before the mentorship program i think the thing that worked best for me is uh during the first month i was kind of uh throwing applications left right and center it wasn't very focused um and i thought it was like oh, i thought it'd be the right thing to do is like just get everything out there like just apply for whatever comes up and after about a month of that not working, um, I finally started kind of being a bit more specific and tailoring, um, you know, tailoring resumes, tailoring stuff like that for the specific job that I was looking for. And I think the biggest thing that benefited me is I started talking to people. Uh, I, guess, uh, <laughs> uh, I think they, I actually, I think Dennis, it was you and Patrick, I like pinged about the the job at Truly Social. I'm like, hey, like, I think I'd be a really good fit for this thing. Like, can you put in? Uh, the extra work for me. And I'd been lucky that um, my boss, Joe, I'd actually met, um, I didn't work on an industry project with him, but he was in the same building with us. So I'd had a chance to like chat with him prior to that as well. So like he, he remembered me from then. Um, so I think honestly, my biggest thing is like networking is the best way to go about it. Like if you find a job, a studio you really like, see if there's anybody on LinkedIn that like you have like either an immediate connection to, or like a secondary or tertiary connection to. And if you don't, uh, Dennis is on my on my right here, so I'm going to point that way, but that might be wrong. But if not, ask Dennis, because uh, Dennis is probably going to know them. 
Um, so yeah, I think the biggest thing for me that I was doing wrong is I wasn't really relying on uh, networking when I think that would have made my life much easier from the get-go. Uh, so that'd be kind of my tip, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, Tom, uh, same here. I applied to 25 to 30 different companies and uh, I got either ghosted or just they uh, refused work with me without any reason. They just rejected me. But then I realized that, oh, this is all about connection and networking. So uh, I feel like, and then, like for example, Sean introduced me to the art to the to the art director in TSG, and we had a meeting, and then I got hired. So what I'm trying to say is that you have to make that connection, and uh, if you can just meet a person in a company, it uh, it provides you with a chance that they actually talk with you. They they get they can know you better and also you know, like what kind of personality you have, your characters, and uh, it's really important uh, because people want to know that what kind of person you are and it increases your chance to get hired versus that just a CV or resume that you might uh, upload to their website. So networking and networking is very important. And I feel like this mentorship program helps you to uh, improve your networking. Yeah, it, it, it is funny because at the beginning, like a couple of my peers at the CDM uh, kind of make fun of me because they were asking, okay, how's your job hunting? Uh, how many companies have you applied to? And I was like, I don't know. I'm just going around chatting with people, uh, <laughs> see what it goes out. Like I'm just around like, hey, like I was just chatting with people. I was not even like applying to different jobs. I was just like, hey, uh, Sean told me about, uh, talk to me about you. Um, how are you doing? Or hey, I don't know. I was just like literally chatting with people and my, and my, and every time that I have to update um, what Dave uh, gave us, like the paper the document for Dave, it was like, yeah, I chat this week with three different people. Uh, I was not even applying, but I was just, I don't know, talking with them about life. And uh, and I think that worked out because at some point they had like, hey, Santiago's a nice person. Why don't you let me introduce you to this guy, or, you know, whatever. So at some point I started like applying more, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it uh, it helped a lot. Just uh, chat with people. Not, I mean, of course, the, I think the worst thing that can, that, that I mean, I, at least that's what I think that you can do is like just ask for jobs like instantly, right? Like, hey, how are you doing? Just can you look, this is my portfolio, this is my resume, can you hire me? I think that's the worst thing to do because like at the end of the day, uh, if they want to hire you and if they want you, ha you to be in their team, it's not because, of course, of course it's because of your skills, but also because you're a nice person, right? Um, if you have to be with someone sitting next to you for, for, the, for the next year, you don't want to have like a, I don't know, like a bad person next to you, right? So it's, uh, yeah, just chat with people. That's great, thank you. Well, yeah, and you you all three brought up a good point, you know, the networking, but also just, you know, one of the great things about having a mentor is that, you know, that's for, it's a great way to kind of practice, you know, uh, your initial networking skills. So, you know, and, and um, the mentors, as you can see, and soon to be mentors have obviously had a lot of experience, you know, getting out there and networking. So I think it's really invaluable. Um, does anybody else have questions? Anybody? I'm actually, the, the, the old man on the mountain, Dave Frakia, I mean, having him formally uh, and on top of the internship and having you do those check-ins it's great to have that but I do I mean I think what you're bringing up on the peer side like having it's one thing to have administrators or faculty kind of say hey I've got a connection but a true relationship a friend someone who's been there done that I think the empathy that a, an MDM peer has kind of puts you in a different spot so I think that level of connection is huge um, not to downplay the old man on the mountain Dave I mean it, this is a uh, you're much needed and loved. Um, yeah, yeah, there you go. That's, uh, that's awesome. But uh, anyway, I just want to jump in and, and say that, that it's, I'm, I'm so impressed that this mentorship program has been formalized. And it is more of a commitment, the informal connections, hey, speak with so and so that's been happening for a long time. But this is really solidifying the, the, and 
validating this as a, as a program. And, and you, you three are still early adopters. This is in the early stages of it. So we can't thank you enough, but um, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I'll shut up again, because I know you had a few <laughs> remaining questions or opportunities for others to ask questions too, so. Yeah, and one of the things, I actually have a question for all three of you. Um, I know myself, I've had mentoring in the past um, and I really benefited from it. I wanted to see if um, either of any of the three of you have ever had uh, mentoring in the past or have you have been a mentor in the past? Is this your first go round? Um. I guess the, I guess in undergrad, I kind of did, but honestly, the best mentoring I got um, professionally ended up being the minute I got the job. Because uh, in the last three years I've been at the company, I've learned a scary amount of things that I didn't think I'd ever like pick up. But, you know, it just comes up in idle conversation. Of, oh, hey, like, do you know how to do this thing? No, I was like, oh, well, someone will, you know, you organize with coworkers, they show you how to do it, then suddenly you can do it. And funny that you ask, uh, I'm actually doing a workshop at the company tomorrow to teach some Virginia artists like this new software. So it's like, you know, you get taught a thing and then you teach it to someone else and just kind of keeps going. Uh, so I think definitely in a professional environment, like once you land your job, like you'll not only obviously be happy to get the job, you'll learn a whole lot more and probably a lot of things you didn't expect to do uh, at the job. And then down the line, you'd probably be expected to teach that as well. So yeah, I think for me, it, it comes up like a surprising amount in my day to day. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. I'm actually going to jump in again really quickly because I love that answer and I wanted to give everyone on the on the call sort of a, a good interviewing question too. If you want to like, what, you, where do you see yourself in five years? If you say you want to, you know, grow and learn, but as you're learning, potentially, you know, mentor new people coming along the way. I mean, that's been a part of me. I've been mentored myself for, you know, and I, I like to mentor as well. Employers love hearing that. So, and again, again it's, it's kind of like an extra credential, a micro credential in a you know, in a, in a more spiritual way that you've been a mentor, or even a mentee, but wanting to be a mentor, that's huge. That shows that desire to give back and share what you've learned. So anyway, I just, I caught that and I was like, yeah, you know what, that's, that's something that I've heard in interviews before. And it just makes me that that person is an awesome person. Sean, you're awesome. Anyway, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. I second that. How about Santiago Parasio? Have you ever had any, have you been mentored before or have you been a mentor? Well, I think it's kind of similar. Or you've to been Sean. mentored, sorry, you have been more mentored, but have you been, have you, sorry, have you been mentored like before this? Have you had any experience? Uh, I don't think I have been mentored like in terms of like, like more academically wise, but as well as Sean, like uh, when you get into a job, you start learning a lot from your peers and a lot of from the people that surround you. Um, actually, uh yeah like i don't know like uh, back in the day well back in the day no like five years ago back in the day in 1984 <laughs> uh i was working with one of um with hector which was part of the cdm as well like c12 and i remember when I, we were working together back in colombia uh he used to like we used to do these like workshops together with the company that i that uh that well, that, I, that I had in Colombia so it was like kind of nice but it was not like a mentoring program it was just like everyone teaching what they know to each of their peers right and each of the people that surrounds you because at the end of the day you want the teams to succeed and that's in the academic part in the in the job part everywhere like if you want to go ahead and do something great you have to you have to grow the team with you it's not only you it's just about making grow everything that surrounds you but in, yeah no I don't I have never been mentored <laughs> so uh, the interesting thing is that uh, through the CDM's website, so many people uh, have approached me, uh, like it's my email address or Instagram, and they just ask me, okay, how we can just apply for a university, especially like CDM, and we want to come to Canada from my country. So I try to help so many people like updating their parts uh, like um i try to explain them how they can update their portfolio or see their resume so i feel like this can be kind of a mentor thing yeah okay dennis thanks uh yeah that's kind of my experience 
And one of the points you brought up, Santiago, that I like, you're talking about, you know, how when you were in school, you know, you would get together and you'd kind of share your skills with each other and teach each other. And I know that that's something that we've, um, that the students in the MBM program have been doing for a long time, um, you know, uh, running little workshops and stuff like that. So that goes to speak to the informal mentoring that we were doing. So, yeah. Um, so this is a, sh a question for, for Sean, and then I'll, I'll throw it to uh, Santiago and Prostu. What is, um, do you have any advice for, uh, for the C-15s? Um, I think the main thing was uh, the networking side of things, really. Uh, reach out uh, between, like, before you even reach out beyond, uh, you know, into the wide world of Vancouver, you've got your own cohort. Like, you have no idea who in your cohort knows who, and you'll be surprised that the connections that are just lying there waiting to be, you know, taken advantage of, uh, you know, without even have to do a whole lot of extra like work. And from there, uh, you know, if you find a place that you really want to work at or you really want to learn more about, and if you don't know anybody there, then that's when I would advise reaching out to, you know, someone like Dennis or somebody, you know, kind of the broader range and try and uh, get yourself into that that little network space that they've got. Uh, what I will say is once you've landed, uh, at least in the games industry, um, I imagine it's the, the case for most places, though, once you've kind of landed your first job in the Vancouver industry here, you're kind of like, regardless of whether you want to or not, you're in the network. Like you will meet people from other industries. You'll go on to, you'll connect with people on LinkedIn and then you'll see like, oh crap, like they know like 15 people at this place I'm interested in working at at some point. So like, I do think that once you've gotten the first gig, it will be much easier to get your follow-up ones after that. Uh, so I think the biggest tip I can say is just, yeah, like kind of like what Santiago was saying, you know, it's not all about just throwing uh, applications around the place, but it's about like meeting people and talking with people and kind of getting your foot in the door that way uh, helps like that goes a very, very long way. That's great. Um, and then Santiago and Prostu, do you have any advice for the C-15s as they embark into their internship term and then they start to look at uh, getting an, a mentor? Yeah, uh, I just wanted to say, try to have small steps, like don't make a big deal of that and just maybe you start with updating your portfolio and uh, <clears throat> ask people to uh, ask people's feedback on your CV, resume, try to make, uh, like try to update first everything that you already have or you might want to add to your, uh, to, to your projects and then start doing networking as Sean said, which is super important. That's my only advice. Yeah, same here, like networking and don't freak out. Yeah, not freaking out is good. <laughs> and, and thank you, Prostu, for bringing up uh, about, you know, CVs and portfolios. Um, you know, that's something that as a mentee that you can certainly bring to you, your uh, mentor. You know, if uh, you, obviously you can, you've got the staff and faculty you have Dave. Um, but, you know, when it comes to that, uh, what, that peer experience, I think it's great to have uh, your mentor um take a look at it because obviously they've been there. So yeah, multiple eyes. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? We've got about 10 minutes left. Um, also one more thing, uh, one of the challenges that I had during um, Sean might uh, be, dis um, Sean might disagree, but I couldn't speak English very good. So as an- uh, I will disagree, that, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And it was very scary to me. Okay, what if I get an interview and I can like answer the questions? These are very hard. Like when you, as a non-English speaker, when you think about this kind of stuff, you might freak out. Uh, but I believe once you start practicing everything and make everything ready, uh, you're gonna be fine. Like, as I said before, don't make a big deal of it because uh, worst case scenario, you might go like work in a job temporary. You know, I was working for uh, like a 
non un, unrelated tech company, but it was like temporary. I mean, you're gonna be fine. I just want to say again, don't freak out. I love that. Thank you for us too. Don't freak out. But no, that's a great point about you know um, for people who. English is your second language. And also it's a great way to practice and practicing with your mentor, right? You know, that's, an, it's not the official way to practice, but it's uh, definitely, uh, you know, a, a good way to kind of, if you're a little nervous about networking, getting out there, talking to multiple people, you can kind of, you know, start with your mentor. So thank you for that. That's a really good point to bring up. All right, any questions for, are a great guest. You guys have been great. Like just, yeah, all the, all, all the um, advice that, um, and your, yeah, your experience has been really great. This has been a great conversation so far. So if anybody has questions, please, uh, you know, these are, these are some great alumni that we have here. All right. No, I think all the bases were covered. I mean, the scary. Think, yeah, that's true. It's, it's it's covered right? yeah. yeah, Josh yeah. is coming on camera here too. It's like, uh, again, I you know what I love about this program and the alumni and that too. It is family like, and it is meant to be more that you know, like people that get it, and you know, we want to have a, a you know this community of, of supporters, and the supporters are there. But I also know people get to a point with Zoom or. You know, you're just you're tired. You're, you're don't question. Don't ask a question. It's fine. You'll, you can do. Most of us are introverted, actually, in this program. If we were actually to draw an eye, I mean, it's you know, that's, that's me. I'm, I'm I don't really like this, but I do it because it's I like bringing <laughs> people together. But um, and Santiago, I won't click on your link because it's giving me a security warning. I don't know if you're spamming us in the chat. Oh there. no, it was just Michael's cut. Okay, the, good. It was like the, I get potential the, security the fires, connected. The I was like, <laughs> Yeah. Hey, there's the old man on the mountain, Dave. What do you, you got to have some closing thoughts here too, as the, the the one that saw these through the internships in the past. But how can the upcoming interns take advantage of this? And from your opinion, Dave? Well, I think it's been said over and over again by Paris to Sean and Santiago, which is reach out and start by reaching out to alumni. I mean, you've already probably heard the message loud and clear that that's helped an incredible amount. Right, that kind of networking. So please, please, I've tried to kind of reinforce it, but I want you to hear it from <laughs> your prior courts that have gone through this and done it. Uh, and I still remember some of the times we were discussing where you know there were concerns about whether you'd find a job or not, whether you'd find a job or not. I probably harped so many times to say make connections or hear some connections or reach out. And then as soon as you guys started doing that, it was it, it happened fairly quickly after that, really. So at least from what I remember. I'm an old man, I can't remember that much. But uh, yeah. Well, Dave, there's a question in the chat too about mock interviews. I think you have a plan for something about that too. I just saw, uh, is it possible? Yeah, actually, I, sent, I already sent out the emails. I'm trying to organize mock interviews this year and all of that came from feedback from the prior cohort. I tried setting something up the time before, but it was too late to get set up. And now I've been able to set up a couple of studios. So uh, for any of the C415s, please, uh, you saw, I think I sent out a reminder today um, to reply before the 19th so I can start setting that up for later in August and September. But I didn't say much tonight because, you know, uh, Sean Santiago Paris, you were saying it all and you were saying it great. I really can't even add much more to everything you've said. It was fantastic. And thank you. Yeah. And that's, I mean, no that's, the, that's the main no reason. Worries. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you, the three of you. This has been an amazing conversation. And that's probably, like, uh, like we said, probably the reason why there aren't many questions. You've covered a lot of ground. So we're really, really uh, grateful to have you. And well, you covered a lot of ground, too. I want to put that out there because you, you, you put the method to the madness of that, this mentorship. Maybe program. the madness. Maybe the madness. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's, you <laughs> okay. brought it. And it's, it's, it's a great addition to the program. I saw a number of comments already appreciating it and it is such a huge addition. So, and it wouldn't be happening if you, you didn't kind of pick it up. So well, it wouldn't be love. happening if we didn't have the amazing alumni community that we have, that's for sure. So <laughs> I'm just really appreciative of it. So, yeah, no, thank you. Thank you, the three of you I really, really appreciate it. Thank you everybody um, who has joined us tonight been a great conversation. And like I said to the C-15s, I'm going to be sending out 
an email to you, the questionnaire uh, soon. So look out for that. But if you have any questions about this, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. And one more thing, like during the, uh, throughout the mentorship, um, once I've got you matched up, please feel free to reach out to me anytime. I do my monthly check-ins, but I'm around. If there, if you need to email me about anything, you can email me, Dennis, but yeah, just wanted to throw that in there. And Sean, you, I mean, it's, it's not the expectation to take on two mentees. So you kind of double down on that. So you get two <laughs> thumbs up. For this guy, you're on this side yeah. of my Zoom call. Well, one thing I noticed is uh, someone from the chat has already added me on LinkedIn. So that's a good <laughs> <step>. <laughs> Yeah, so, no, That was good. me. <laughs> uh, that's actually a good point. It's not normal to have two mentees per one mentor, but this just worked out that way. And Sean did a great job. So. I got some, I got some very good mentees yeah. and two coffee cards. That was the real reason I did it. Ah, I see, yeah. I see it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, anyway, this, I mean, the whole circle of life thing here, I mean, it, it's so what it is. I mean, it's like you've mentored them. They're now stepping up to be mentors. Like in San Diego, Paris, so you're definitely great so additions the, to the mentor community. The best, yeah, I'm excited. Thank you. Yeah, the best thing about that is Paris, who said to me on Monday night, she was afraid of teaching because of her English. And now she can prove to herself that she's going to do great. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so Yeah, that's true. You're going to do great. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for having me, having us. And it was a great honor to be here and meeting C15s. And I'm looking forward to uh, work with you in this program. Thank you so much. Yeah. And yeah, C15s, you're looking at two of your potential mentors. So <laughs> Sean's done with it now. He's like, I'm out of here. Is that no? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm on the fence at the moment. I will see how the schedule looks. I'm not looks. putting any pressure there. <laughs> <laughs> I had those two. Never again. <laughs> uh, really cool. But right. yeah, I definitely will be considering it again. That's it was, great. Yeah. It was, it was a lot of fun. And yeah, a really great benefit for like everyone, really. Yeah, Thanks I hope again, everyone. Do I'll be, yeah. I'll be, I'll be emailing you. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> Please do. Great. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you thank so you much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Have a good Bye. one.